Hey everyone, welcome back to The Strange Case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde by the great Scottish writer Robert Louis Stevenson. Um, make sure you're subscribed to me, obviously. Uh, give me a thumbs up, comment what you're thinking so far. And if you really enjoy listening to me reading, um, you can find my, uh, my coffee and my buy me a coffee links in the bio. Um, I would really appreciate um, being sent a bit of cash that some people do from time to time um, if they really enjoy what I'm doing. Um, some people have actually got a, a regular monthly uh, donation to me. It's really easy to do. Um, not if you can't afford it, obviously. Um, you know, only if you're over 18 and if you're comfortable with sending me cash, absolutely fine. Uh, if you do, very much appreciated, but don't feel obliged, obviously. Anyway, Chapter 7, Incident at the Window. It chanced on Sunday, when Mr. Utterson was on his usual walk with Mr. Enfield, that their way lay once again through the by-street, and that when they came in front of the door, both stopped to gaze at it. Well, said Enfield, that story's at an end at least. We shall never see more of Mr. Hyde. I hope not, said Mr. Utterson. Did I ever tell you that I once saw him and shared your feeling of repulsion? It was impossible to do the one without the other, returned Enfield. And by the way, what an ass you must have thought of me, not to know that this was a back way to Dr. Jekyll's. It was partly your own fault that I found it out, even when I did. Oh, so you found it out, did you? I said Utterson. But if that be so, we may step into the court and take a look at the windows. To tell you the truth, I am uneasy about poor Jekyll, and even outside. I feel as if the presence of a friend might do him good. The court was very cool and a little damp and full of premature twilight, although the sky, high up overhead, was still bright with sunset. The middle one of the three windows was halfway open, and sitting close beside it, taking the air with an infinite sadness of mien, like some disconsolate prisoner, Utterson saw Dr. Jekyll. What? Jekyll? Jekyll! he cried. I trust you are better. Oh, I'm very low, Utterson, replied the doctor drearily. Very low. It will not last long, thank God. You stay too much indoors, said the lawyer. You should be out, whipping up the circulation like Mr. Enfield and me. Uh, this is my cousin, Mr. Enfield, Dr. Jekyll. Come now, get your hat and take a quick turn with us. You are very good, sighed the other. I should like to very much, but no, no, no. It is quite impossible. I dare not. But indeed, Utterson, I am very glad to see you. This is really a great pleasure. I would ask you and Mr. Enfield up, but the place is really not fit. Why then, said the lawyer, good-naturedly, the best thing we can do is stay down here and speak with you from where we are. That is just what I was about to venture to propose, returned the doctor with a smile. It's strangely, it's got a full stop right in the middle of that. I think that is one full sentence, but it's got a stray full stop in it. It says, that is just what I was about to propose. I would venture, venture to propose, but yeah. But the words were hardly uttered before the smile was struck out of his face and succeeded by an expression of such abject terror and despair as froze the very blood of the two gentlemen below. They saw it but for a glimpse, for the window was instantly thrust down. But that glimpse had been sufficient, and they turned and left the court without a word. In silence, too, they traversed the by-street, and it was not until they had come into a neighbouring thoroughfare, where even upon a Sunday there were still some stirrings of life, that Mr. Utterson at last turned and looked at his companion. They were both pale, and there was an unanswering horror in their eyes. God forgive us! God forgive! Give us, said Mr. Utterson. But Mr. Enfield only nodded his head very seriously and walked on once more in silence. Mm. What do you think happened? What did they really see at the window there? Just a momentary glimpse. And Chico looked horrified, didn't he? Uh, such ab abject terror and despair as froze the very blood of the two gentlemen below. And then the, the window snapped down. What did they see? What's going on in that room? Mm, interesting. Leave me a comment. Let me know what you think. Make sure you subscribe to me, of course. Um, as I say, feel free to use my buy me a coffee or my coffee link ko-fi. 
Um, it'd be very much appreciated, but it's highly not necessary. Um, all right, thank you for watching, and I'll see you for the next exciting chapter of the strange case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde.